I first encountered Ken Queter back in the seventies with the Secret Kids. Uh-huh. I I was at um, Glassboro State College, which is now Rowan, which is kind of like in the middle of the woods in New Jersey, and they had a concert series down there. A friend of mine went to that school, and he he booked everybody. Uh-huh. So I would I would drive down there and see every. I saw Jonathan Richmond in the seventies and uh, a whole mess of other people, Tom Waits. Uh-huh. And one night it was Ken Queter and the Secret Kids, and I went because I had been reading about them. Mm-hmm. Uh, David Frick was a big fan, mm-hmm. and he was uh, a local writer at the time in Philly, and he was always writing about Ken Queter and the Secret Kids. <laughs> so I went, and so the band comes out on stage with no singer, and they're playing, and all of a sudden two people are pushing a refrigerator a refrigerator on wheels or like a (laughs) you know some kind of freezer on wheels Uh and they and they push it out to the middle of the stage and then the door flies open and queter comes out wearing a white jumpsuit and holding a cane (laughs) and he's wearing i think he's wearing a hat it was like you know clockwork orange Uh (laughs) (laughs) and then he the band's playing and he goes up to the microphone and I'm like, okay, I'm going to hear this guy sing. And then he screamed for like a minute, like one scream. Uh-huh. Just, ah! And it went on and on and on. And I was like, this is my favorite performer. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is the best thing I've ever seen in my life. Uh-huh. And I've never recovered. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, I found out later he had a folk side to him, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and that's when uh, we worked together. We did a, a cassette-only release, which was kind of humorous, mm-hmm. if you think about it, mm-hmm. um, called Kitchen Folk, mm-hmm. because we got together in his kitchen, and he would play me all these songs, and I would uh, listen to them and make notes, and, and um, he wanted me to produce them, and I was like really, really into it. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And I wanted to do it the old school way, where you sit around and you listen to this to the guy's material. I, I wanted to be John Hammond with with you know Bob Dylan sitting in my kitchen, you know. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> and I listened to a whole lot of songs, and then uh, we chose a bunch, and we went into a studio in Camden, and the whole thing is acoustic. Uh-huh. And then we did some electric stuff too, which ended up on the. Um, hmm, it was like a double LP retrospective thing, and then I, uh, and I think there's a Man Overboard album. Mm-hmm. I, the way he released it confused my my ability to tell you exactly what I produced by him is yeah. a little hard because he released it in a kind of a convoluted way. Gotcha, gotcha. But he's he's a genius. He's a genius. I mean, I, I, that guy, his songwriting. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah, he is impressive. And the permission he gives himself to uh, be Ken Queter is really impressive. Yeah, you know, and he was uh, an influence on me too because I, you know, giving giving myself permission to be Ben Vaughn uh-huh. Uh, uh-huh. didn't exactly come naturally. I came from a very humble background where you know my parents, their idea was you never call attention to yourself. Uh-huh. You know, uh-huh. and then I would see Ken Queter. I'm like. I don't know, man. I think it's I think it's pretty cool to like uh, embrace who you are and put it out there. Uh-huh, and uh-huh. Kenny was one of the first guys I was able to witness up close doing that. Yeah, yeah great guy, great guy, and um, unbelievable artist. I'm so happy that he's still creating and still performing. It's 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 great. 